Grace, mercy, peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who shifts our perspective to see the world in a new way. Amen. Our focus for this morning is on the, the Gospel of Mark. Again, this whole story of Jesus that we've been journeying through during the Lent and uh, the, the whole season since the beginning of the year, specifically landing us um, on the story of Jesus, the resurrection, Mark 16, on Easter Sunday, and making that journey with the lens of Jesus' generosity. Because written throughout the whole story is this theme of how Jesus gives and gives and gives, sacrificially, certainly on the cross, but also in other ways. And so today, a very clear explanation of what generosity looks like in the most unexpected place, where Jesus points out a woman who's giving everything she has. And Jesus says to his disciples, they, the, the chief priests and teachers of the law, they all gave out of their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. As we consider Jesus' unique perspective on generosity. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, may the words in my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Holy Spirit, be in my lips and in the ears and hearts of everyone present, that we may all hear a good word from you. Amen. Perspective is everything. Let me say that again. Perspective is everything. The perspective you take to something will change the way that you see it. You may see something a little differently when your perspective changes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, just looking at that picture the way it is, it's a, a, a cyclist laying on the ground. Nothing special, but you change the perspective through the magic of digital photography and editing, and it looks much different, doesn't it? Obviously, it's designed that way, but we can see other instances of this. A couple of people lying on the ground, looking up at or out at a bridge, but if you change the perspective, it changes the whole outlook of what it's all about. Kind of spectacular, huh? Or how about this one? Now, how did they get that guy up there? <laughs> that was my first question. How, how did they do that? Well, again, perspective changes everything. Again, I'm not sure how, how much of these photos have been um, photoshopped or, or futzed with or... or whatever um, people do to kind of create these things. But truly, it doesn't take a whole lot. It's just a shift of perspective. And Jesus is really good at shifting people's perspectives. Let me tell you what I, or show you what I'm talking about. We have a whole slew of stories in Mark 12, which again, I'll encourage you to read on your own time throughout the week. So many stories in each of these chapters that if we were to take just one chapter, we could have a whole sermon series on it. But there is a, a persistent um, conversation that Jesus has with people about what the kingdom of heaven looks like. He is the king who comes to us, and he expresses the kingdom of heaven wherever he goes. And it often looks very different than what the people he encounters think it looks like, especially those who should know better. And so when he tells the parable of the vineyard owner about how he entrusted his prized possession to people who worked it and then tried to kick him out. That's a story about his generosity to them and their unwillingness to reciprocate. When he has a conversation about giving to God what is God's and to Caesar what is Caesar's, he's trying to put, shift the focus of where generosity should go. That certainly there are ways we should be generous towards people, but we have to never mix up between being generous to God and generous to people, giving to God what is God's. When he has this conversation with the Sadducees about the resurrection, they try to entrap him with this conversation of a, 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 a far-fetched tale of, of a woman who becomes the, the wife of seven men sequentially. And he tries to refocus them and shape their perspective so they see it's not about those rules and regulations, but it's about the gift of the resurrection. That's what he's trying to give. Over and over again, he has these conversations, conversations about who is, who is greatest um, or what it means to love people, who the Christ is supposed to be, uh, really gives them a, a, a I don't know, a, a, 
a difficult thing to a difficult problem to solve shall we say when he talks about how david is seen both as the the father of the messiah but also calls him his son like there's all these beautiful expressions of jesus shifting the perspective onto the kingdom and what generosity looks through that lens looks like through that lens but at the very end of all of this after all these exchanges some of them heated with the intelligentsia the the theologians of the day the ones who should know better he steps back and he says to his disciples take a look at this take a look at this because this is going to be a better picture of the kingdom than all the things you've seen before i've had these terse conversations with the pharisees the sadducees and now we're going to step back and i'm going to say look here you hear that word behold every once in a while in scripture especially in the old testament that's just the way of saying look here behold looky here or as my um, old hebrew professor liked to say shazam here's something to pay attention to jesus steps back with his disciples and he says take a look at this this is where we find jesus he says look at all these people giving all of their big fine gifts but it's just a sliver of their income and he says to the disciples come here look at this i tell you truly this poor widow this one lady with her two mites has put more into the treasury than all the others for they all gave out of their surplus but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had all she had to live on my friends that is a beautiful expression of trust in god to give all we have and trust that god is going to still sustain us i think that's the the clear message that jesus is trying to to send but once again when we step back and see this in the perspective of the rest of the chapter we can see that jesus is trying to shift his disciples perspective you think that generosity looks like this but what it really looks like is absolute and complete trust. And so it got me thinking about how, how God continues to change my own perspective. And I wanted to share just a, a couple of things that God's been teaching me as I continue to wrestle with living in a broken world that doesn't always see things through the lens of what God is up to. And so many of you heard about the, the terrible shooting in Atlanta just this past week. And while maybe we'll never know but authorities still don't quite know if it was racially motivated or not it really made me my heart go out to um, those in the asian american community who have been beset by violence just because of the color of their skin or the shape of their eyes and it makes me angry and upset all over again because i've seen the same thing done to people who have different color skin to african americans as well none of us is is immune to violence in this world whether on our hearts or on our bodies and it's not okay. It's not what Jesus came to bring. And yet, we see this kind of violence that's just unacceptable. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to, I haven't become some sort of woke social justice warrior, and I'm not encouraging you to do that as well. I'm simply telling you this has been something that God has continued to shape my perspective. So that when I look at people, I can see not a person for of, of all the, the characteristics that make them up, but a person for whom Jesus died. And that's how he wants me to see them. That's how he wants you to see them as well. There's whole internal conversations that people have inside because of their gender or the color of their skin that being male and white, I don't have. And so God continues to encourage me to see people around me with new eyes and new perspectives, to approach them with compassion in a new a new way so that I can love them the way that he has first loved them. I, I heard on the radio the other day that today, Sunday the 21st, is National Single Parent Day. And so uh, the, the person on the radio said, if you, get a, if you know any single parents, solo parents, take a moment to encourage them and lift them up because they are doing the job that is rightly designed for two parents to do all by themselves. And it's not an easy thing, so encourage them. And it got me thinking that, again, God is changing my perspective. I'm usually generally open to people in their circumstances, and some people um, have this, this part of their story, being a solo parent, uh, by no um, means of their own. 
it's thrust upon them. Some have to deal with the consequences of sin, and that's part of their story as well. But as I think uh, about how blessed I am to have a co-parent in my household, and my wife is, is a fantastic mother and teacher, and the way she invests in our kids truly blows me away sometimes. It puts in my heart, in my, my eyes, a different perspective on those who don't have that. And to think about me raising my kids by myself, I, I can barely bear to think about that. And so once again, God is shaping my heart and changing my perspective because he wants me to see not just his generosity to me, but how I can be generous to others. And the, the last thing that came to mind as I'm thinking about how God shifts my perspective, uh, I'm not sure about you, but I tend to watch the nightly news just to keep up on things. I don't vegetate in front of the TV over um, news stations. I know that's a, a pastime of some people, and it can, it can be a good thing, but it can also be destructive. And I notice, maybe you'll notice this, this uh, pattern too, that quite often news shows half an hour. You got half an hour to say, death, destruction, catastrophe. Oh, look, a puppy. You get that every once in a while? There's got to be some sort of good news at the end to kind of lift our spirits after they dump all the bad stuff on us. And be that as it may, I think I see some of those stories where there are children out there, especially during this pandemic, who are investing in the people around them and doing some pretty amazing things in their, their communities, in their neighborhoods, that I would have never thought of. And they're inspiring and they're encouraging. And it's once again shifted my perspective away from seeing young people and children as people who have yet to step into their own. And to see them as some who are leading the way. And it makes me wonder, well, what am I so afraid of? Why can't I go out and do some of the things I see them doing? It's encouraging. It's inspiring. We need more of that. So once again, God continues to shape and shift my perspective. Because he wants me to see his generosity in a new way. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if some of what I've just shared, some of my own story, may have frustrated or... Um, uh, disconcerted you a little bit. I'm sharing something that's going on with me because I, I wanted to start a conversation. You may not agree with me, but the point I'm trying to make in the midst of all of this is that God's generosity pours out on us and he wants us to see what that looks like with a new perspective. That's what he was doing, pointing out this one woman with her two mites. He wasn't saying, go and give everything that you have monetarily today. What he was saying is, what I want is your heart, all of your heart. And that looks like being oriented, oriented towards the kingdom of God, completely, totally, wholeheartedly, and then oriented with compassion towards your neighbor and those around you, to see them as people for whom I'm going to die. And we have the advantage of looking back and saying, we do have someone who is generous, not just with his presence before his crucifixion, but as a supreme act of love, gave everything he had for you, for me. That's true generosity. And that's the perspective with which Jesus wants us to go into the world with compassion, with love, with new eyes. Now here's the good news. We don't always understand Jesus' generosity. We don't always look at the cross and when we do, we don't always understand the deep depth of God's love there. We don't understand God's generosity, even when it looks like his son, his own son, hanging on a cross. And yet, he gives us time and space to wrestle with this marvelous mystery, this great act of love and, and care, the likes of which we have never seen since and never will see again. And to see God's plan built into that, that it we have a Savior who not just died for us, but also rose for us to give us the final victory. And as we wrestle with what it looks like to see God's generosity in the form of a broken man on a cross and an empty tomb, Jesus gives us time to figure that out and to respond accordingly. I think the truth of the matter is that we all need God's grace. We're all equally broken in different ways, in unique ways, and this world does a pretty good job of breaking us down. But to see that is a matter of 
perspective. I got one more picture for you. What do you think of this? It's all a matter of perspective, right? Equally broken, in different places, and yet it is in our brokenness and perceiving that brokenness and the compassion that is needed in those spaces that the love of Jesus shines through. Maybe you're the one who's feeling adrift and in need of land this week. Maybe you're the one who's feeling like you're marooned and looking for an escape. Maybe you get to be to someone else the grace that they need. That's why Jesus put us here. That's why he's given us this example of his generosity and seeks to shift our perspective so that our hearts respond to people around us in the same way that he does. We are all in need of grace. And the good news is that God gives us his grace in abundance. Good news? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are perpetually in the work of changing our hearts and our perspectives so that we see not just ourselves, but also see you and people around us with a different perspective. We see you as the, the God who saves us. We see ourselves as your very much loved kids, the one you were willing to give everything to save. And we see those around us as equally sinners, equally broken at the foot of the cross, equally in need of your grace and equally recipients of your great love for us through Jesus. Continue to shift our perspectives and work on our hearts even when we don't like how it feels or where we, when we don't like what it, it, it puts us through. Continue to shape us and change us so our hearts and our lives look more like your kingdom's coming here and prepare them for the day when we see it in all of its fullness. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, who is the King of all. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes far beyond what our heads can understand, keep your hearts, your minds, always in Christ Jesus as he continues to shape you for the kingdom. Amen. <laughs>